I wrote two songs that, that I know of that I wrote by myself. One was a song for Lynn Anderson called Smile For Me. And it was, a, it was a hit for her back in late 70s. And then I wrote a song f about my daughter Allison's birth by myself. And Elvis recorded it a uh, uh, long time coming. Great. That must have so been those some. two, I know, I, those are, I think, the only two I ever wrote by myself. Okay. Everything else is co-written, yes. Well, I think, uh, is this person going to finally find me out and uh, realize that <laughs> I'm lame -o. Uh Now, um, for, me, for me now, my feeling is what I need to do is to provide an atmosphere in the room that's going to be conducive to creativity. And so uh, I try to, because uh, I mean, I, I'm in a u unique position because sometimes when people sit down to write f with me, they don't see me, they see this name. And they think of all these songs that go along with this name. So the first thing I try to do with people is just let them know that they were all co-written with probably 50 or 60 other people and that there's no reason why you can't add your name to the list. Mm -hmm. So I like to get comfortable like that. And generally, I'll say, end up saying, I, 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 never let a, I never let a bad line keep me from opening up my mouth. So there's a lot of bad stuff that comes out of me. And I think that as time goes on, hopefully people start to think, how did this guy ever make a dime doing this? And then hopefully that translates into, hey, I think I got it. Yeah. So, and then it's just a, uh, a back and forth. I'm a real high verbal writer. Um, I don't do well with people who, which, I mean, I don't do well with people who don't say very much at all. Mm -hmm. um, but there, there are people that write great together that never say anything. They just kind of sketch it out and then come back together. And I, I don't do well that way. I, I, it seems to kind of shut me down a little bit. So I like to write with people who are throwing a lot of stuff out back and forth. I write some melody. I write some lyrics. Uh, if I'm going to be involved in writing a melody, I learned a long time ago that uh, being the kind of, <laughs> quote, mus musician I am, uh, it's faster for me to sing it to my co-writer, who in most cases is a really good melody person. And generally, they like it, and, and they, they work it out real quick. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always felt that my greatest ability is... Uh, when I think of myself as a writer, I think of myself as a as like an umbrella over the over the project, and I hear music and and hear I hear words and music at the same time, and um, the sound of those words and music coming at me are sort of like a, a canvas that a painter would use. Uh, uh, things look out of place or don't look right. And that's what tells me that that needs to be fixed. So I'll say something like, you know, hey, that sounds great, but this little thing right here feels kind of left-footed. I think we need to work on that a little bit. Um, and also, uh, in looking at the overview, I, I a lots of times see where a song needs to go uh, to really pop, to really snap. And um, that, that's kind of generally the way I work. I don't know anything, you don't know anything, but together we just might know something. The first person I ever wrote a, a bunch of really great songs with was a girl named uh, Gail Barnhill. And uh, we were chapel music together, and in fact we were writing before chapel music, and Gail and I got a lot of cuts, and that, and that was an example of, that's what taught me the I don't know anything, you don't know anything, because I knew something and she knew something. I just didn't know what she knew, and she didn't know what I knew. And it kind of came together in the middle, and it really kind of 
launched us into the world of the arena of, of songwriting and got us both deals. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, w that was a wonderful co-writing situation. Uh, Charlie Black, um, Charlie Black uh, had a great idea. It's called Shadows in the Moonlight. And uh, so uh, he came over to my house with that idea for Ann Murray. And we wrote it. And, uh, and not only did we have a good time writing together, but Charlie and I just had dinner with him last night. Uh, we're very, 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 very close friends, almost like brothers. Uh, Mike Reed's another co-writer that I've had in the past that that I really got along with. Great, we had a we, we had a lot of fun writing the songs we wrote. Um, Carrie Shader, um, who one of the writers I wrote, I know a heartache with, and you look so good in love. Um, great guy, I met him in L.A. He's, we're friends. I just talked to him this morning. Uh, so, uh, uh, K.T. Oslin, um, I, I personally bow down to K.T. Oslin. I think she is the diva of divas. Um, I've had a lot of success with her, and I love her. I mean, she's just a great person, too. So, I, um, in those kind of situations, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm fr I end up being friends with those people. And so, it's not, it's not a matter of uh, when I don't, when I haven't written with them, I've still been in touch with them and been, and been friends. That doesn't happen all the time. I was fortunate that that happened with them. What is it like when you have your friends and you share the success with them? That's got to be one of the greatest feelings in the world. Yeah, uh, it's it's wonderful. Um, uh, Carrie, I, when I, I talked to Carrie Chater this morning, and uh, yesterday, uh, I mean last week, uh, a young Nigerian guy named Bosom Mora did. You Look So Good in Love in the Boston American Idol auditions. And he did You Look So Good in Love, and it got him a ticket to L.A. And uh, I called Carrie, and I said, Carrie, this is, isn't this an incredible man? And Carrie's going on to, uh, he, had, he had a church music degree to begin with, and he's writing in totally different areas now. And it's, it's, it's a joy to see the way people develop.